Hi, in this video, I'm going to discuss how I built a uh, solar panel charger for my car. It doesn't involve a solar charge controller. Stand by and I'll show you the details. This is a standard 5 watt solar panel that you can buy on Amazon or AliExpress. So what I did here is I put in a fuse and then I have a diode here that keeps this from draining the battery when the sun goes down. Uh, so the solar panel will drain the battery when the sun goes down if you don't put a diode in here and you don't have a charge controller. Uh, then I hook everything together with this, put a strain relief on it, and I'll, and then I either feed it through the door or it sits on the dash. Something I haven't covered is, and I covered in another video, is why would you want to use this Schottky diode instead of a proper charger for your battery. Well, this is a five watt panel and it doesn't overcharge the battery on my car. You may want to use a, a regular battery charger, a regular solar char charger that you can buy for about 10 bucks on Amazon if you have an RV or you have a situation where you're using this a lot to keep your battery topped off. This is not my case. My case is every couple of days I'm going to need to use this panel. Maybe every three or four weeks I'll use this panel. So the wire is just going to be closed in the door here. So once it feeds through the door I constructed a voltmeter that has an intermittent switch that you can switch on and read the, the voltage uh, just to check to see where your voltage is at. Some people can use this cigarette lighter charger. However, in my car, it, it's only on when the key's on, so I can't use this for charging. Instead, I have to use this ODB2 style connector which gives me 24 hour access um, to the battery and it does it is unswitched. I also protect uh, this cable with a 5 amp blade style fuse. We're going to take a quick look at this switch that I bought inexpensively on Amazon. It uses a momentary switch. This voltmeter was an afterthought and it does add a bit of complexity. And if you need volt measuring capability, maybe you'd be better off just buying a charge controller and hooking the solar panel to the charge controller so you, you can avoid the hassle of hooking up this voltmeter. I already had it on hand, but I think if I was starting from scratch and I needed voltmeter or amp capability, and I was unsure about the size of my solar panel that I needed, I would probably just buy a charge controller and a little bit bigger solar panel. ODB2 connector that plugs in, uh, it's a computer connector. And it has 12 volts, it's a 24 hour on all the time uh, connection to your battery. So it doesn't rely on the key. So that's going to output 12 volts, and that's going to go to a fuse that's very close to this source. We want to have a fuse very close to the, the, the connector if we can. I'm putting a 5 amp fuse in here, and then um, the negative comes. So there's just a two conductor cable that comes off the ODB2. Um, I've chosen to put a um, momentary switch in, um, and you can see that it has a, a um, normally open and a common and I'm hooking the voltmeter positive um, into the um, normally open connection and I'm connecting um, the just onto the 12 volt positive line with this so when we press the when we press this connect connection down it makes these two together and turns the voltmeter on this is totally optional and i've also said maybe if you want this feature you'll just go ahead and buy a low cost solar charge controller that on ebay they probably are around 10 bucks or 12 bucks 
and you can then run a bigger a much bigger solar panel here on this side with that and you and uh, I'm just um, I just did it because I had the parts um, I put it in a 2 amp fuse this is for the people that probably uh, don't want to bother with a 5 amp fuse it's best to put it near the battery but you may want to just put a fuse on you know because of the uh, convenience and then there's a diode with a value of 80, uh, 5819 that you want to put in there to keep the solar panel from um, to, to, to where it can um, only it can only charge the battery the battery can't take energy and put it back to the solar panel and waste your battery and lower your battery. Now we'll take a look at the schematic if you were to decide to put a solar charge controller in instead of just using the diode over here. So it's a replacement. If you use the solar charge controller you don't need this 5819 diode. So we start with the ODB2 connector. It hooks to the battery and there is some sort of fuse here. I didn't show it up here in this schematic but there's a battery probably with a fuse that um, would blow if we accidentally shorted this wire here but finding the fuse may be difficult. Uh, so we're going to have the same situation here. We want to have a fuse very close to the ODB2, but this time we're going to have that so solar charge controller. It can be set here in this B setting, and you just hold down the B setting, and it allows you to set different B battery types and that's going to hook to our solar panels. We're probably going to have two amp protection there um, to protect this wire here and again you could use a larger solar panel if you're going to use this solar charge controller. You could use something say 10 watts or greater and uh, charge your battery that way and charge it quicker. Uh, you don't really want to have a too big of a solar panel on this setup with the diode because you could still run the risk of overcharging this battery. The sparking module that I got, you can see it's got male pins and that's what you're going to need. And then it also has a cigarette lighter connection with an LED. It's going to unsolder this and connect it directly to the solar panel. So we're going to talk about fusing now. So these are um, blade fuses. I'm a big fan of these. They're cheap and they work pretty well and is a waterproof, I would call it a water resistant um, blade fuse holder and they sell these on Amazon or AliExpress and you can get these. So the idea is for fusing is to get as close to the battery as you can for your fuse. So what I'm going to do is put one of these fuses on in line to this connection and I'm using a crimper here I've got it set up correctly for here and these shrink tubing butt connectors are um, marine grade and they have adhesive and they are wide. You can see where I made the crimp connections and joined the fuse holder right there to the um, wired the plug connector that's going to plug to the battery well is you can heat shrink them and so you can just apply a heat shrink gun here's the finished product so these things are called crimp a seal and I had them uh, have a good source on eBay I've done other videos on wiring 
and my sources on how to do wiring properly uh, just check out my other videos but I do mention this crimp seal connector on the other videos now I'm going to show you uh, what I did. I just removed the cover off of this and I soldered on this fuse here which is a one amp fuse holder and I'm taking that over to this um, connector here. It's a Wago style connector However, they don't make these, Wago doesn't make these, I found these on AliExpress. So I'm taking in and then I'm jumpering over to this other line and the stripe on this diode, let's see if you can see it, but the stripe is on the battery side, stripe on the battery side. And then I'm carrying this line out, which is going to go to the car um, battery connection and then this black wire is either stays in place or you can solder and desolder on a line that's suitable length and you can see there that I've added a tie wrap for a strain relief so when we pull against this wire it's going to get retained by this case here.